This time we're going to put together a Bill Fitz Morris crossover for him, which fits almost all of his uh, piezo equipped PA boxes. What I have here is a, a two way circuit board, a 0.6 millihenry coil, a 0.5 coil, a 15 UF non polar capacitor. You can always tell they're non polar because of the size. A 5.6 UF electrolytic, that's what you always want to use on a high pass side for a tweeter. Uh, a 10 watt 30 ohm resistor and a 20 watt, 20 watt 4 ohm resistor. Bill calls for a 10 on that one. I prefer to use a 20 uh, because it is a power side of the circuit and I just I just think it's better. It doesn't. It only costs about a dime more and I think it's worth it for the protection. So I'm going to show you how to lay this out on here because you have to do quite a bit to this board in order to make this work. So the first thing you do is, is the big coil goes right here. And you want to make a mark there, 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 and there. And the small 0.5 millihenry coil goes right over here. Now that's it for your big holes. <clears throat> you do need to drill uh, a, a few smaller ones uh, because your, your 30 watt or 30 ohm resistor goes right here. So we need a small hole here for it and another small hole up here for it. And the 0.5 millihenry coil goes right there and we need a hole in the ground pad for it and we need a hole up here in this intermediate pad on the tweeter circuit path. So now we'll take this over to the drill press and drill all of these out. So I have a 1 16th bit in the drill press and that's what you use for wire connections. Um, as you can see I have a, a backer board underneath the circuit board and that's really important that you do that because if you don't the back side of that circuit board will crack out very badly when you drill the holes through it. That's it for the small ones. Now I'm going to drill out the larger holes. This is a quarter inch bit and all of these holes are actually for zip ties to tie these, these pieces down so they don't vibrate around in the box because these coils are heavy. Drill this one a little bigger because the zip tie doesn't fit through it very well. And that's it. Your board is prepped now for assembly. Here's the things you need to assemble the circuit board. You need solder, a pair of wire cutters, a soldering iron, a glue gun, zip ties, and I have a, a nice little brass thing that I use to keep the tip clean on my soldering iron, but if you don't have one you can just use a wet rag and wipe your tip off. It's important to keep your tips clean so they'll transfer the heat quickly. So the first thing we do is mount the coils. And you want to set your coil with both of your wires facing this way because where the coil has to connect is right here which is the woofer output and right here which is the input from the amplifier. So take your zip ties and, and tie that sucker down and tie it down pretty, pretty good. Uh, PA cabs get thrown around a lot and these coils will come loose unless you do this. Mount the, the 5 millihenry or the 0.5 millihenry. We're going to mount it vertically, and the reason for that is is coils give off magnetic lines of force, and their poles run this way. So we don't want them to, to interfere and self-destruct. So if we've got them at 90 degrees to each other, they won't interfere with each other and screw up screw up the uh, inductance. Um, if you've got them far enough apart, it's not a problem. On this board, they're close enough together that it is something to consider. Uh, but I really like this board for building building Bill's crossovers. It's, it's easy. It works really well. And once again, you want to get your wires this way so you know you've got enough to reach where they've got to go. Now 
make the connections. This one connects here. This one connects right here. This coil goes here and here. This is the ground pad, so the coils go to ground. This coil goes to ground. This coil goes to the woofer. This is the actual coil that does the filtration for the woofer, so it goes to the woofer plus. Then we install. <coughs> Capacitors. And you need to shove that capacitor over a little bit because that resistor still has to go in here. So put that capacitor, that 15 UF capacitor in place and hot glue it down. And be careful with hot glue guns. They make a mess and they'll burn you like crazy. I can't tell you how many times I've had a hot glue gun burn me badly. And the resistor goes right here. And up here because it's part of the tweeter circuit. The 15 UF is part of the woofer circuit. That's why it goes from woofer positive to the ground leg. But the tweeter is the same kind of a, I mean this is the same kind of a shunt on the tweeter circuit so it goes from the intermediate pad to ground. And once again hot glue it in place. Then our 5.6 UF which is the uh, capacitor for the tweeter goes up here. And our four mil our four four ohm resistor goes right here. And one of the things to be aware of when you install this resistor is make sure you pull that down and expose that screw right there because you're going to need that screw to mount it to the box and then hot glue this in place. And now you're ready to solder. Okay, we're going to solder this. Here's my my gun. It's just, it's just a typical 25 to 40 watt soldering iron. I do run it as hot as it will go uh, because I like things, I like to solder quickly. And one of the things you'll find when, like here where I have two wires in one hole, sometimes the solder will want to wick down below that hole and not make the joint. So you heat it up a little bit and apply some solder just to kind of tack things in place. Then turn it over. See what happened? All the solder ran down the wire. Go ahead and, go ahead and clip that one. Now it will solder up just fine. Maybe. Being a little cantankerous. That happens with these. When you got a big hole to fill up, sometimes you got to really, really put it to it. There it is. Sometimes you have to do these these big ones from both sides in order to get a good solder joint. Just like that. Now we'll get the rest of them. The rest of them are all just single wires and they're easy. Just put a little heat to it. And when your iron is hot, it goes really fast. sure you apply heat to the board and to the wire because it's got a bond to both places. You can 
can see it when the solder flows out into the joint. It's, it's um, something you just kind of have to learn by doing, to tell you the truth. But you can see a point the water, all of a sudden the solder will stop being a ball and it will just kind of flow away out into a puddle. This particular brand of circuit board is not my favorite. They're harder to solder on than the, than the ones that are copper-faced board. These take more heat, but I'm out of the copper-faced boards. See, that looks like a ball. That is probably not a good joint. Let's hit that one with some more heat. I don't like heating the components that much, but on the resistors, They'll take quite a bit. The capacitors you have to really kind of pay attention to. Be careful how much heat you put to them. And the coils, you can you can cook a coil pretty hard and not hurt it any. And I know it looks like I'm violating the old rule of don't put the solder to your iron, but I have found that working on these circuit boards, that's the best way to do it. So there you are. That's a soldered and completed Fitzmaurice crossover. Then just take your snips and clean it up on the back side. I use a pair of these flush cuts. They work a lot better than your standard wire cutters. They're not too bad, 12 or 15 bucks. If you do very much of this, they're a worthwhile investment. So there's a Fitzmaurice crossover with parts from speaker hardware. That's how you put it together. Thanks for watching.